Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video of uh, the build of the new project I just finished. Uh, it took me the better part of a year to work on, uh, but I had the time of my life working on it and it was, uh, it was just a lot of fun to do. Uh, this is probably a good place to stop if you're short on time. Otherwise, if you're interested to know how all this stuff works, uh, the next six minutes of the film I'm gonna go through uh, module by module essentially what it is that they do and how a, how a synth makes its, makes its sound. So, if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See ya. The synth starts off with uh, four oscillators, and essentially the oscillators are what make the actual sound. Two of them are audio level oscillators. They're able to play sounds that are all in the audio range. You can see there's a square wave, a triangle wave, saw wave, or a pulse wave. You can switch between them. They all have their own tuning, coarse and fine tune, and then there's a mixer knob in the middle that lets you decide how much of each one you want to use. This one over here is a low frequency oscillator, that's what the LFO is, and that puts out either a square wave or a triangle wave, and then there's a frequency knob on that as well. The idea with an LFO is that it's going to oscillate probably lower than like 20 hertz. When it's down low like that, it's useful for doing modulation with another thing. And then you've got this one in the middle, and this is a hybrid. This essentially does either audio level oscillation or sub audio level. The way these work in terms of what pitch they play is the amount of voltage that's fed to them. So for every volt that you send it, it's going to play another octave. Uh, so one volt would be the first octave, two volts would end up playing an octave above that. The next we have one filter, it's a low pass filter, so there's a cutoff frequency and a resonator, and based on how you tune those you can kind of make it sound like a wah 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 kind of thing. And then finally over here you've got an amplifier, and an amplifier takes whatever signals that you're sending to it, and based on some voltage you send to it, it decides how loud it's going to be. So then there's two what are called envelope generators, AR1 and AR2. AR stands for attack and release. It's essentially the same thing as fade in, fade out. So each one of these little modules is completely responsible for doing its own little thing. So they end up taking some kind of voltage in and they end up producing some sort of effect. So then that comes to sort of what it's all these switches and knobs for. The idea is you can take LFO2, for example, this thing that's pulse, pulsating green, and you can send it to these different areas. So then what it's essentially doing is whatever signal it started with, it's now sending to these two things. I'll give you an example of what's going on here. And switch to the other one. To oscillator 2. And then somewhere in the middle. But then you can also add in the third oscillator and set it to play in the audio range. So if I start off just playing a note, and then I go over here and I decide I want to use this, you can see what that's doing. And if I change it to the other waveform, I've got these pitched so that it'll be about an octave when they start switching on. Okay, so the amplifier we want to add, if I want to take this sub audio frequency and send it over to the amplifier, you can see how that affects this. So the best way to show you what the filter does is just start messing with the cutoffs. The nice thing is you can use these other oscillators to modulate it. And 
And so then the, the knobs over here determine the audio signals that you're going to send through, and then the knobs here determine the control voltage that modulates the volume. There's this fun little thing over here called an arpeggiator. It's a little hard to explain. I'm just going to I'm just going to start using it. Essentially, it creates an arpeggio based on however however many keys you press. This tells you the number of octaves or cycles you want to arpeggiate. This tells you whether or not you want to do roots, meaning you'll play all of the keys in the arpeggio. Then it would be as if you jumped to the next octave to play the same keys again. And inversions would be you play the chord first, then you take the bottom note and you move it up an octave. And then you play it, that's the first inversion. And then you take the bottom note and then you move it up an octave. And then that's the second inversion. So it essentially inverts however many times you have here. And then finally you've got this portamento, which basically is a glide. So you can see at an extreme level what the, what the portamento sounds like. You've got it off. So it's how fast it's going to glide to the next key. And then down here you've got a headphone jack for headphones out. And then underneath of that there's a MIDI input. And so you can use a computer to, to feed MIDI data to this to play a fun little chip tune. Uh, Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching.